Good morning. Good morning. That's okay. Yeah, delight to be with you on such a beautiful morning. Uh, a few things to highlight uh, this Friday. Uh, the Guatemala Mission team will be uh, serving at the Pepsi Shack at Jerry's uh, ribeye steak sandwiches. So please join us. Uh, 11 to 1 we'll be serving. Next Sunday is our semi-annual voters meeting. Don't run. It's okay. Uh, the meeting will be following church. The meeting will be, and, and to entice you to stay, the ladies will be serving cinnamon rolls and caramel rolls, and the meeting will be in the fellowship hall. So please come, have some food, and join us. Uh, it is our budget meeting, so please come uh, so that you know where we are and uh, our plans for next year. Uh, and then uh, in the back of church, in the fellowship hall, uh, the table to sign up for mums, you have this week and the next two weeks to order those. If you'd like those, they will be delivered on September 22nd. Uh, as part of extravaganza, uh, they did a make it, take it, that blessed welcome sign that we held up last week. They did half of those, so there's still 25 available. Here's the good part. You can order one today and pick it up next Sunday. You don't have to make it. It'll just be a take it. Uh, or you can host a party at your home and have people come and they can make it and take it from there as well. So that's available. And then there's still some cookies left uh, from the extravaganza booth. Those are free will offering. And then monster cookies, it's that time. We'll be making those this week. We'll take orders today. I'm sure we'll have extras and we'll sell those uh, as well. So if you'd like to order some to make sure you get them, that's back there as well. And the farmer's market is getting bigger and bigger. There's tomatoes and cantaloupes and green peppers and cucumbers and plums and zucchini and some squash, I think. So uh, help yourself, free will donation for that as well. Uh, a great day to be in the Lord's house as we uh, welcome Wesley uh, into God's kingdom through the waters of holy baptism in just a few moments. Our order of service as we gather at the Lord's table today is divine service setting for our first hymn, 789, praise and thanksgiving. Uh, blessings to all of you this day. Continue with the order of uh, holy baptism, page 268 in your hymnals and up on the screens. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and are born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Wesley Ray Groco received the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Wesley according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in him which has been inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Wesley Ray as sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, then answer by saying yes with the help of God. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. We hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us stand together as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Because this child cannot answer for himself, we shall all together with sponsors and parents, faithfully speak on his behalf in testimony of the forgiveness of sin and the birth of the life of faith God our Father bestows in and through baptism. <coughs> Wesley Ray Groco, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce him. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, yes. I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. Wesley Ray Groco, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ. Be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we may hear his words, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Wesley Ray the new birth in holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And you, Wesley Ray, the Lord bless you in all your ways from this time forth and even forevermore. We continue with our baptismal hymn, I Was There to Hear Your Morning.
continue together with our confession and absolution. Let us stand. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue as we sing responsibly the intro. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise is Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Great are the works of the Lord. Full of splendor and majesty is his work. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. He provides food for those who fear him. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for this, the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, is from Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beasts. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her young women to call from the highest places in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, come. Eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse, and he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 5. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not associate with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand together for the Alleluia, the verse in the gospel. According to St. John, the sixth chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. 
This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is of no avail. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to, the, come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and in the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May we be seated for our next hymn, 696. O God, my faithful God, 696.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I was wondering this past week as I prepared my sermon, what's the most foolish thing I'd ever done or what's the most wise thing I've ever done? Now, I'm probably not going to share those with you, but I want you to think, what's the most wise thing you've ever done? Or the foolish thing you've ever done? I mean, as I got to thinking of it, I'm like, you don't need to be a fool to live foolishly, and you don't need to be wise to live wisely. Right? Foolish people sometimes do wise things, and wise people sometimes do foolish things. Today we're being called to wisdom by the one who himself is wisdom. Wherever you are in life, whatever situation you find yourself in, whatever crisis you're in, whatever joy you're experiencing, you are being called to wisdom by wisdom to live wisely. Our Old Testament reading today from Proverbs helps paint a picture for us. Wisdom. Wisdom has prepared a rich banquet. And wisdom calls to all who are simple or foolish to come and eat and drink. This is a banquet not just for the wise, for those who have attended a, a certain standard. No, this banquet is for all. Even the foolish who act wisely. And those who refuse, even though they may be wise, are acting foolishly. And then St. Paul in the reading from Ephesians, all who hear those words, to, to consider how are we walking? Or how are we acting and living in this life? Is it wise or is it foolish? Because it matters, Paul tells us. He says the days are evil. You see, Satan is working. And Satan just doesn't work eight hours a day from nine to five. Satan works 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Make the best use of time, Paul tells us, for the time is short. So the question is, are you? Are we making the best use of the time? Are there times that you assume you have plenty of time? Is that wise or is that foolish? Do you think that evil will not come upon you? Is that wise or is that foolish? Do you presume that you'll have the, the will and the power within yourself to be the person God wants you to be? Is that wise or is that foolish? Yet, who amongst us does not act foolishly? Because who amongst us is not sinful or sinful, full of sin, filled with sin? Sin that says the foolishness of this world is is wisdom, and the wisdom of God is foolishness. Sin that says, my will is wise and God's will is foolish. Sin that calls evil good and good evil. Sin, which is the ultimate foolishness. Don't be deceived. That sin lives in you curving you in on yourself, tempting you to rely on yourself and to not rely on God, that to follow your own thoughts, to follow your own desires instead of His, right? to do what seems best to you instead of what your Lord has told you is best. And not only is that foolish, it's idolatrous. And we have all bowed the knee to that idol. Yes, the Trinity idol, me 
myself, and I. But like I started, today we're being called to wisdom. The call goes out for us foolish, sinful ones to act wisely. The call goes out to come sit and eat well and drink deeply of the true wisdom, the wisdom of God and His Word. And for that reason, you've entered into wisdom's house, right? The church. For here is the Spirit of God, the sevenfold gifts of grace. And here, wisdom himself, the very Son of God, feeds you. He, he's set a table before you, a, a banquet, a banquet of word and sacrament, to root out that foolishness, to root out that sin, and to bestow upon you forgiveness. But you see, this isn't any fast food restaurant. This isn't a drive through There's a banquet here. There's a banquet set here each week. A banquet set for us to enjoy here for a lifetime and in heaven for eternity. A banquet of singing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. Washing in the water of salvation like Wesley was washed today. Drinking deeply from that fountain of forgiveness. To read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest the word of God. Eat and drink the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The, the flesh and blood given for the life of the world. There on the cross, now served for the life of the world here in his supper. Come, he says. Yeah. Come. Eat. Eat. And drink, linger for a while, stay, learn, question. Then leave and take this wisdom out there into the world, in your vocations, in all your walks of life, everywhere you go. But, but return, right? Always return. Return to be refreshed, return to be forgiven. For to do so is to live wisely. To not do so is to live foolishly. And that's the heart of it right there, of what it means to live wisely. It, it doesn't mean to be smarter than others. It doesn't mean to be perfect. It doesn't mean others will think you're wise. It means whatever your IQ is or whatever you scored on the last test, whatever mistakes you make, whatever struggles, challenges that are facing you, whatever your past or the prospects of your future, to live wisely means to live in your Savior, to live with the life that only He can give, the life that begins now and the Life that lasts for eternity. The life that began today for Wesley through those waters of baptism and continue to eternity. Who else can do what Jesus has done for you? Who else can do what Jesus did for him today? I mean, who else even wants to? He's come to give you everything. He's come to give you himself and he holds nothing back. To take all that is yours, your sin, your rebellion, your uncleanliness, your death, and to make it his. And to take all that is his, his forgiveness, his sonship, his resurrection, his kingdom, his life, and to make it all yours. Yeah, the, the world calls that foolishness, <laughs> utter foolishness. I mean, who would make such an exchange like that? No, the world says those things need to be earned, deserved, given only to the most worthy. But, but our Lord calls this wisdom. That's the wisdom of the cross. The high serving the low. The one who is life dies. So that we who are dead may live. That we who are foolish in sin, repent and live foolishly no more. And so, yes, wisdom calls us. Whoever is simple, 
Let him turn in here. Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. I mean, it's Jesus calling to us. We heard that today. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. My flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in him, in me and I in him. Whoever feeds on this lives forever. If there's, if there's one thing we've been taught is that the things of this world do not abide, right? Even the most majestic, impressive buildings crumble and fall. Cities are destroyed. And when those things are destroyed, so too whatever confidence and security we had in them are destroyed as well. But you see, we have one thing that abides forever. And that one not only created our world, but himself came into it that he might give abiding life to us. That no matter what may happen in this world, that no matter when and no matter how, we have nothing to fear. Because our life is not the things of this world. Right? The things of this world which perish in wind, fire, and clouds of dust. Our life is in him who abides forever. And his life is in us. And therefore, as he abides, we abide. As he lives, we live. Just as he is risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, so will we. Is that foolishness? Or wisdom you don't need to be a fool to live foolishly you don't need to be wise to live wisely come leave your foolish ways and live come once again and eat for all is ready forgiveness life salvation all here for you you who are wise. Amen. And now may the peace of God, that peace that surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen. Let us stand together as we continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Father, feed us with wisdom and righteousness. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Nourish us with the love and life of your dear Son. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Nourish the church with the fine bread and choice wine of Jesus' own body and blood. Fill it with your heavenly light and life. Let that light cheer many hearts and guide many lives to you, Lord, in your mercy. Give wisdom, graciousness, and prudence to all who are persecuted for Jesus' sake, and use their witness to strengthen our faith and to call their tormentors to repentance and salvation, Lord, in your mercy. Feed the members of our church with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and fear of the Lord, and enjoy in your presence and grant that we gladly and graciously share this feast with our families, neighbors, friends, and communities. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for the service of those in our military and all first responders. Give them wisdom, courage, and competence in dangerous situations. Heal those who are wounded and shelter those who fall in the line of duty. Bring swiftly and safely home those whose work is not yet done, and grant us all your peace. Lord, in your mercy. You hear the cries of the righteous and of all who suffer. Hear and graciously answer our prayers on behalf of all who are afflicted by pain, grief, shame, despair. We lift before you this day Ashley, Harlan, Jim, Luann, Marlene, Marvin, Janice, Al, Harold, Ray, 
Roman, Verona, and Fred. Restore their health, hope, and joy in the company of all who love them. Lord, in your mercy. Incline your ear to our prayers, dear Lord, and answer them according to your most gracious and holy will. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated now as we gather our offerings to the Lord. We continue with the service of the sacrament and the preface on page 264 and up on the screens. Let's stand together. 208, excuse me. 208. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying... Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Let us stand together as we continue with the Nook de Midis, page 211. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. May be seated for our closing hymn, 862. Oh, bless the house, 862. 